Does anyone have any new binge watching suggestions? I got through all the new stuff and I'm now going back and re-binging all of my old favorites. So most recent was How I Met Your Mother, which will make sense in just a minute. But before we get to the soap that we're making today, hi, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. Sudzers, welcome back to the channel. This is Soap and Clay, and I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. And today we are at day 17 of 365 days of soap, and we are doing the Bro Code. Bro Code has been a soap that's been in my line for a very, very long time. It's uh, one of my best sellers as far as the men's line is concerned. It has spearmint and eucalyptus and champagne because it's super fancy, and jojoba beads. And yeah, very real How I Met Your Mother references, which is a show that I have been recently re-binge watching. It's one of my favorite shows ever. And you know, stuck in the house and doing the things. So I've been re-watching my old favorites and How I Met Your Mother hit that list. And I realized I haven't made the bro code in a little bit. We were getting low on stock. And so I thought it was a good time to go ahead and make it and show you how it's done. Now for this particular bar, I like to play with the design a little bit from, from batch to batch. And this time I'm going to do a thin lines pour. And I'm also going to show you three different ways that you can cut the same log of soap. Are you ready to check it out? Let's go. So we are doing the bro code today, which is actually a lot of fun because this bar changes a lot. When I first started the line, this was sort of a uh, butterfly swirl for the bar itself. And I decided that that wasn't sort of bro-y enough. So it's been changed up. The colors have always stayed the same. The recipe formulation has always been exactly the same, but the design of the pour has always been a little bit different. And recently I've really gotten into the thin lines pour with this particular bar. So you get to see that in action today. But for like sort of the history on the bar, I I am a huge How I Met Your Mother fan. And when I first started the, the soap business, right, I was 100% online. And I wanted to sort of uh, distinguish myself from the, you know, I make soap in my kitchen people. Even though I was legitimately making soap in my, my kitchen, I didn't want that sort of, you know, country kitchen vibe to be you know, shown throughout my, my soaps. And so I started, you know, writing the copy for the website and it's hard to write about soap over and over and over again. There are only so many things that you can say about soap, right? It bubbles, it's moisturizing, it cleans you. Yay. And so I decided sort of early on that I was going to give every soap a personality. And that's where that's where all of my soaps came from. You know, you have the Tyler Durden, you have Hello Gorgeous, you have Am I Bright, and you have the Bro Code. And the Bro Code is another one like the Tyler Durden that has a sort of pop culture reference. And that's where that comes from, is how I met your mother. Because, you know, you have Barney and the, the, the Bro Rules and, you know, everything. And it's hilarious. And so the copy of my website, therefore, took on sort of that, that kind of theme. And I scented this particular bar with a uh, spearmint and eucalyptus and champagne because, you know, Barney's super fancy and he's always, you know, partying and doing the thing. And so I needed a sort of alcohol type element within that as well. And yeah, that's where the bro code was born. The colors themselves had nothing to do with How I Met Your Mother any 
more than you know anything but I just needed really a green and blue line in my in my men's line and so I, I put green and, and blue and then black for grounding because I, I like three colors whenever I'm doing a swirl so this is I mean technically a four color but it's a uh, I, I really like to have the black to really ground the uh, the two colors and really make them pop and with this particular batch again it used to be a butterfly swirl and now it is a thin lines pour and so that's really cool you guys are going to get to see the cut of this and how it sort of uh, is different than the standard sort of cut everything into one inch bars from from the get-go which is fun the exfoliant for this we do put in jojoba beads and so we only put that into the white portion and it's a light exfoliant it's not something that is you know sort of overpowering that you're going to need to use for your feet or your elbows and nothing else it's just a nice body buffer really and we have everything really well mixed in we have the micas really well mixed in with the soap batter the soap batter itself is a lovely batter it's nice and thin it's going to be really good for the thin lines pour and the kaolin clay is mixed in because i you know make clay soaps we we need to have a video on what clay soaps are i think because I, I feel like I, I talk about it all the time in the videos and I mean I definitely talk about it all the time in classes and at the shop because I, I make exclusively clay soaps and maybe we should have a video on why clay soaps are awesome you let me know what you think in the comments whoa I am such a youtuber I, I just said you know hey I want your opinion in the in the comments but I really do want your opinion this is part of the whole process with all of this I am missing the human interaction that comes from you know me getting it to be with people at the shop and a lot of that is you know questions about the product and me getting to explain like the science things and the soap things and all the things so yeah give me your opinion in the comments but yeah we have everything mixed up in this guy and we are ready for the next step which is the pouring of the thin lines pour Now, a thin lines pour is actually really cool. It's sort of a, a modification of an in the pot swirl, where normally with an in the pot swirl, you would be adding all of your colors sort of in big globs. If you're looking at like the, the face of a clock here, at like 12 and 6 and 3 and 9, and then you give it a quick swirl just to give the, the batter some movement, and then you pour it into the mold in you know various fashions. But for a thin lines pour, really the coolest way to do a thin lines pour is to pour everything into the pot that you're going to be pouring from vertically. And you're making nice lines with each of the colors. And then you're just going to go from side to side with your batter, kind of, kind of a slow pour. And as you continue to pour down the wall, you're going to see all the different colors sort of go into the mold in different kind of fashions and it creates a really interesting bar inside where you have some sort of thicker lines on one side and then some some, some thin lines in, in other layers and you know hence hence the name and once you realize or you see that you're pouring a little bit too much white you essentially go back in and you pour the rest of your your color in and you know continue doing it again now we pour on an angle with this to really allow the layers to set up on themselves as opposed to you know if you're just pouring straight down into the middle of the mold everything is coming out from the center of the mold and so your pattern is being determined by you know that center point and the lines themselves they're not going to be really crisp they're going to be actually the opposite of that they're going to be very muddy and with a thin lines pour that's why you would do it sort of at an angle to make sure that you're allowing the lines to sort of continue to exist and gravity isn't doing its thing and sort of obscuring them. Now this is going to be really cool because the first little bit that came out of here was just a big blob of blue and then black before the little teeny tiny line started again. So and that's going to be about midway in the bar. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what that does in the cut. One of the cool things about a thin lines pour is that you never really know what you're going to get in the cut itself and all of the bars are going to be completely unique. And that's honestly one of the reasons I love the in the pot swirls or swirls in general more than, you know, layered soaps or, you know, soaps with embeds or whatever 
because they're all different and that's that, that's cool to me it's it, it still makes it exciting when I cut into a bar of soap I don't know what I'm going to get whereas with like the rosé for example when I when I did the the rosé a few weeks back I knew what to expect in there. I know what to expect within a teardrop soap. I know what to expect within a layered soap or a soap that has an embed throughout. But with this, I never know exactly what I'm going to get. Every bar is going to be a little bit different. And that's that's exciting to me. Now, with the rest of the soap, I now I've set it down completely, you know, on its on its bottom there, and I'm going to just sort of pour the rest of it in in no real you know, there's no real rhyme or reason to this. It's just, you gotta get the soap in the mold at this point. And I have reserved enough of the three colors to do a top to this. Now, this will be another messy top for me. I don't do a lot with the precise lines anymore, like laying on of the, the, the topper. It's It was fun for the first, you know, few months of making soap professionally, but then it got to be more trouble than it was worth and when I realized that you could still make a beautiful top without the perfect little little lines going from you know left to right I kind of stopped doing that and I actually prefer the messier tops now and they look really stunning on on the shelves at the at the shop so I just sort of roll with it now what I am going to do with this is I will take I will still take a skewer to it because you know how can you not take a skewer to the top of your soap it can't just stay messy like that because then it's weird and you do want some sort of semblance of, look, I, I did something of value to the, the end of your soap. So I'm just going to go kind of around the edges there. And then just, I don't know, we're just going to kind of do a random swirl here. This actually ends up being a really pretty top design. And in a slab mold, it looks really super stunning. In something like this, you're only seeing it in one inch increment. But are you ready to see those one inch increments? The cutting of the bro code. Now, again, this is a thin lines pour that, that I showed you. And that actually does require kind of a specific cut to really release the pattern inside. And I thought today we could cut it not only one way, but three ways to show you what kind of patterns can be released in you know the same block of soap depending on you know how you slice it up so to do that we are going to cut this entire loaf into three inch sections so we can play with you know each section individually and that's what you would get if you were to cut it into one inch slices right and that's beautiful that's actually really a very very cool bar and yeah no i really really like that one it looks almost like uh like neurons Right, and so it's very sciencey, and you know, science is cool. But we are going to again show you three different ways to cut this. So we're gonna have you know the the neuron looking soaps, which are so far my favorite. Like that's just that's awesome. I, I love that. But we're also going to cut this from you know left to right, and then also you know top to bottom with each of these blocks to show you the patterns that can be released. Now, this is just, you know, your regular stock standard cut if you were looking, you know, down the length of the mold. And that's great. That's the neuron soap. It's super awesome. But here's another way to cut the bar. Normally, that's how you would do it. But we are going to turn the block over and we're going to cut it from top to bottom. So we're going to split it into three chunks that way instead of cutting it, you know, from top down. So cutting it, you know, essentially from the side same process you're going to you know measure out your your one inch increments in this particular bar because it is you know three ish inches tall a little bit over three inches and then we're going to cut it you know again like top to bottom to show you what it looks like when you cut it that way now that's really cool that would be that'd be a cool wood grain soap for sure, if you had had the colors dialed in right with that, that would be an excellent wood grain soap, which is, you know, awesome and a fun way to do wood grains as opposed to doing them in a slab. And yeah, that's that's lovely. That's that's super pretty. I, I really like that one too. I think I still like the neurons better though. And there's you know the third bar of that. They're all very different. It's very pretty. That one's very cool. So yeah, but we have uh, option three too. So we are not gonna cut it lengthwise down the mold. 
we are not going to cut it from top to bottom. We are going to cut it from left to right, from side to side, essentially. Now, this would work better in a wider mold if this is the cut you were ultimately going for. And this is the way that you are actually supposed to cut a thin lines, you know, soap in order to really reveal the pattern inside. But as I, you know, saw with the first cut, it's actually, this soap ended up being so cool that I didn't really need, I wouldn't need to do this to it. But, you know, again, I did want to show you the proper cut of a thin lines. And, you know, that's very cool. I love it. Now, because we poured on an angle, that's why some of these uh, lines there at the, at the side are, you know, angled. But it has a really beautiful, again, thin line pattern with it. And yeah, that's, it's super pretty. I, I like that one too. I, I really do. I can't decide which one I like better. You're going to have to let me know in the comments which one you prefer. And yeah, you know, there it is. Three different ways to cut the same batch of soap. It's all the bro code. It's all spearmint and eucalyptus. It's all still awesome. And thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. So which bar was your favorite? It was really hard for me to decide. Ultimately, I think I liked the first one that I cut, the regular one inch chunks better than the other two, but the other two really do release the thin lines pour and give you a lot of interest and sort of depth to the bar. The finished product of this pour though resulted in such a beautiful bar with just the regular cuts that there really wouldn't be a need to sort of manipulate the way that you cut the bar to release any other pattern. So yeah, I really did end up ultimately liking the first bar the best, but you let me know in the comments which one you prefer and maybe I'll switch it up in the line for the next batch. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today, guys. I really appreciate it. If you liked the video, like the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. I really appreciate that. You can find me on all social media, uh, handle Soap and Clay, with the exception of Facebook, which is I don't even use soap. Thanks for hanging out for day 17 of 365 days of soap and I'll see you tomorrow. See ya.